you should walk down to the waterfront in the coastal town of Braddock in the state of North Carolina, you'd probably hear a story told about one of the skippers in the fishing fleet that makes this port its home. For this skipper is a woman, a strange, gaunt woman. And you can tell, even at first glance, that she is living somewhere in the past as if even now she were suffering in atonement for all the tragic consequences of her willful acts. There was a time when Ruby was beautiful and alive. And I believe it was this spirit of life and love that caused so much envy and resentment to be voiced against her by the narrow class conscious citizens of our town. For Ruby was born on the wrong side of the tracks. And though she struggled valiantly to overcome this stigma, the townspeople never let her forget it. I'd been in Braddock over a year and was still an outsider. They called me the new Yankee doctor. And then I met Jim Gentry, Braddock's richest man. Jim's wife was an invalid, and I guess he'd tried 50 doctors before he got to me. And somehow, right away, Jim Gentry and I became friends. On that bright September evening, Jim was taking me out to a hunting party at Judd Corey's hunting lodge. To a young and ambitious doctor, that should have been the main thing on my mind. But strangely enough, it wasn't. Does Judd's daughter live at the lodge? Oh? You know Ruby? Well, no, I've seen her in town. Mm, you couldn't miss seeing Ruby if she's anywhere above the horizon. <laughs> Trouble was, I couldn't figure any way to meet her. Eh, this is gonna be a mighty lively hunting party with you all set to launch a campaign for Ruby and Bo Tackman just home from South America. Ruby used to be real gone on him. It hey, sounds like they've already got a head start on Judd Sour Mash Whiskey. Hey, don't let it shake you, Doc. It's just anatomy. I never saw anything like it in dissection lab. <laughs> It's you. Don't butter me, honey. I know you're disappointed. Ah, uh, you're blushing, sugar puss. <laughs> Here, Mr. Ginter sent your gun. Oh, boy, finished it real soon. Gin is usually slow as tar. This gun's a hand-me-down from Pop. I had Ginter make me this new stock. Oh, Ruby, this is Dr. Manford. Only he'll like it better if you call him Saul. Hello there, Saul. Hello. Saul took one look at you and got the, look, 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 that glazed codfish there. I told him it was just anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? No, nothing oh, much. It was all good, Ruby. He thinks you're cuter than a speckled pup. <laughs> Here, Mrs. Gentry sent you some sachets. Oh, bless her heart. How is she? Oh, about the same. Sachets. <laughs> Did you ever? <laughs> My wife set her heart on making a lady a ruby. Yeah, she didn't hold with the saying about making the silk purse out of a sow's ear. Honey, if you're a sow's ear, <laughs> when you come right down to it, what would anybody want with a silk purse, huh? <laughs> Mr. Gentry, sir. <laughs> well, we've been expecting you. This is Dr. Manford, Judd. How do, Doctor? Oh, Judd. You're real welcome. Oh, just leave those things right there. I'll take care of them. Come in, come in. You're exactly what? Jewel. Yeah, Pa. Fetch those things off the porch. Corner room suits you, Mr. Gentry. Fine. Sir. Hello, that puts you in one of the rooms outside, but it'll save you five dollars. Good. Ma Corey! Best cook in Carolina, Saul. Her food's pure sin. <laughs> Hello, Ma. Get some glasses and ice for the gentleman. Tell Jewel to bring in some more liquor. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Manfred. Doc, the big moose is Clyde Pratt. Hi, Pratt. Doc. Neil Falgren over here. It's Falgren. And Colin McAuliffe. Any money you put in Colin's bank, you can kiss goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's been doing a lot of bragging about you, Doctor. Oh, that's real well, nice. I want you to see this stock Ruby's got on her 30-30. that a dandy? Yeah, uh, pearl walnut. A beautiful hunk of wood, Ruby. Yeah. I got it off the gatepost at the old Tackman plantation. I figured find as keepers. Yeah. Must be the only thing out there that isn't underwater. <laughs> I'd give my eye teeth for this stock. Looks like everybody 
is here. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. I'll take the rest of this stuff. Stranger, you look just about the same to me. You have me at a disadvantage. I can't see what you look like. <laughs> but I can imagine. <laughs> hey, give me that light. Let's see what I've been missing. Keep away. Have you grown any? I'll bet you filled out some. Keep your hands off. <laughs> Keep your hands off me. Weird, little devil! <laughs> what Bob tells me, especially when he uses a bullet developed by Brunicky. Oh, that's that uh, ballistic man from Leipzig, Germany. <laughs> that's right. Here's our guest of honor. Bo. Yeah. How are you? It's like old times having you back, Bo. The judge been telling us some grand things about you, Bo. <laughs> Swear if he isn't better Somebody looking. get Bo a drink. I'll get it. That's country's bell. I got that in Brazil. Dr. Manfred, yeah. Bo Tackman. How are you, Bo? Doctor, home for good, Bo, or just visiting? No, I'm home for good this time, Jim. I'm going to tromp on your heels. Oh, out. got yourself some notion? Yeah, a real harebrained one. Claims he's going to drain our old plantation. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, why not? Oh, wet or dry, it's not worth a nickel. It's full of salt. Well, salt's no problem. 300 acres of bottomlands are a fair start. That's more than you had. Me, I started out with two hands and a tough hide. Going to raise cotton? No, I'm going to raise quick cash crops. Uh, produce I can ship north, because the plantation's only the beginning. <laughs> like you started out repairing tin lizzies. <laughs> Bo, you got too much energy for a Carolina boy. Where's me? I'm just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> In South America, Bo. Did those senoritas stir up your bloodstream? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about it, Bo? I hear they're real hospitable. Well, I can't say they exactly cold-shouldered me. <laughs> <laughs> dinner, dinner, come on. Yeah. Come on come but on. I never found one of them who could cook. That's why I came home. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a lot of it in South America, Dad. After they drain the swamps, they plow in chemicals. You can't eat this rich food without good whiskey to cut it, gentlemen. <laughs> Nitrates. I've been shipping plenty to Panama. Oh, I know. I figured on getting it from you. you. Might have to get some of it on credit. Well, I suppose we can work that out. Jim starts out by selling something on credit, and before you know it, you're running another gentry enterprise. Mmm, <laughs> smell that. The more turns out the best there is. No doubt about it. First time I've seen you waiting on table, Ruby. Maybe the last time, so take a real good look. I do that anyhow. <laughs> Boss said it's time she was learning to do a woman's work. Oh, and maybe you'll sell me a 30-30. You got no more use for it. Don't you just wish. It's bagging me a deer tomorrow. Dad doesn't seem to think this plan's gonna work, though, Jim. I can't sell him on it. I raised Ruby like she was a boy. Mm, and something sure must have got out of hand. Look at it. Except for those pants she wears. Hear that, sugar? Mr. Pratt wants you all over fluff. Folks got a sound enough plan. Once the land's drained, he'll have collateral. But he'll need capital to buy the pumps and equipment. Well, Bokes already talked to Cullen about getting a loan through the bank. Oh, he did. Will Cullen go for your notion, Boke? Well, he seems to. He said to drop in any time next week. Yeah. We could talk the whole plan over, but... Ah! You Trying to brand him, Ruby? Sprinkle some hair on her and she'd pass her a bobcat. Ruby. I'm in your corner, Ruby. Ruby, what's going on? Huh? Nothing, Pop. <laughs> You're chasing after Boke Tackman again, ain't you? Inviting damnation for your soul. Dry up. He'll leave you flat. Same as before. I learned a few things in five years. Well, don't you think he's learned plenty, too? He ain't no kid no more, and he won't be satisfied just holding hands. That's my business. 
Gorton and Harold Farr. Hi, you of a church. You watch your tongue, Missy. And you're leaving the hour of reckoning out of your judgment. When the wicked shall be judged for the sins of the flesh and condemned to eternal and everlasting fire. Don't let him rile you, honey. Here, here, now, can't you leave those things? Come and sit down and talk to Jim and me. No. Pop's getting you out before daylight. You better get some sleep. We'll turn in pretty soon. So far, I'm not doing too well. No woman like her. One minute fighting, scratching. Next minute, she's as sweet and soft as any woman alive. Hmm. Guess I like her wild side best. Can't help being glad that Letty didn't really tame her. Oh, uh, you didn't know. Ruby lived with Letty and me for a couple of years. When was that? While she was going to high school. <laughs> Should have seen her the day Judd brought her over to the house. She was nearly 16. Thin, wild, all eyes. Judd thought I was a good enough friend to come to in time of trouble. Hmm, that pleased me. There had been a beach party given the night before for the high school football team. Boat was the star fullback on the team and one of the most popular young men in the county. Which is why, I suppose, he always seemed to think that Ruby should be his for the asking. But Ruby resented his taking her for granted. And so that night, when he tried to get fresh with her, she jabbed him with her oyster knife. Even though she never let on, Ruby was scared. She knew somehow that she was in real trouble. Well, when Ruby suddenly appeared in Letty's bedroom door, Letty was surprised. She called Ruby over to her bed. And Ruby told her the whole story. How she was glad she'd hurt both because he deserved it, but she was sorry she'd hurt him so bad, and how, well, Letty was shocked down to her toes, deeply concerned for Ruby. She rang her emergency bell while she told Ruby that everything would be all right. I came pounding into Letty's room, afraid that something had happened to her. Well, she said Ruby was gonna stay right here with us a while and no ifs or buts, so she could have protection and care a young girl needs. Not having any children of her own, Letty set even greater store by Ruby. Taught her how to dress, how to act toward the turbans, how to manage a big house. Taught her all sorts of nonsense. Then Ruby finished high school and Judd needed help, so he fetched her back to this. So maybe we weren't as kind as we meant to be, training her for a life she can't have. You see, Ruby doesn't belong. You mean socially? She's from the wrong side of the tracks. You mean to say in this day and age... You're forgetting it... where you are, Doctor. But that's absurd. It's worse than that. These fools are so full of pride about who they are, about their fine old family names, so blind but conceited over nothing, they can't see what she is. How wonderful it... She is indeed. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Jim. Ruby. Go away, Bo. I mean it. I bet. I saw how you looked at me. When? Before you turned wildcat and mocked me up. <laughs> if your face hurt, there's some stuff in Pop's medicine box. Go away, Bo. Ruby, who you be hunting with tomorrow? Hmm? Doctor, I suppose. Take him up toward the ridge. 
When you get him to our place, get rid of him. Will be. Will you? Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Put your gun through ahead of you. Oh, thanks. The other way, you're liable to get shot. Ah! Thank you. You sorry you're stuck with a greenhorn? Papa always pairs off experienced hunters with the ones who roar at it. You'll catch on. That's the trail to the swamp. Good place if we were after birds. They come there to feed. But you want to shoot them when they're flying toward high ground. Why's that? Try getting a bird out of that muck, it'll swallow you. It's tree deep and soft as pudding. Beautiful. It's not good for anything. <laughs> but I guess it is beautiful. That hall is a likely place for deer. You go on up the trail. When you get to the top, cut across the ridge. They'll smell you and come this way. What, they smell you? <laughs> Wind's blowing my way. Oh, sorry. That's all right, Doctor. If I tried to do your job, I'd be as dumb as a dog that doesn't know sick him. <laughs> what do I do when I get to the ridge? If you hear me shooting, we've got a deer. If you don't, wait up there and I'll find you. Right. I'm getting rid of it. Maybe I like the doctor. Like. You can like who you want, but I won't be kept waiting. I've done some waiting. Folk, you don't know. You can have South America. You can have the whole world. This is for me. What, Bo? Hill country liquor, Tidewater cooking, and North Carolina women. <laughs> like I always said, there's nothing like a day. <laughs> <laughs> shot I ever made. Naturally, I missed. He was shot twice, a couple inches apart. Five-pointer. He's a beauty. So are you. No, Boak. And no more games, Ruby. You're gonna get it straight in your head, Boak Tackman. You can't come back here and treat me like part of the scenery. I'm not just a North Carolina dame. And you know I'm crazy about you. Along with devil crab and moonshine whiskey. I remember the way your hair smelled. How it felt to put my arms around you. What a crazy, beautiful kid you were. You remember all the lies they told about you and me? How your family and all those snobs were so dead sure they knew what was going on. Well, they were wrong then and they're still wrong. You're so pretty when you lose your temper and your eyes start blazing. Hey, why don't you give up, Ruby? You know you can't hold out the way you feel. Get out of here! I swear if you don't get out of my sight, I'll blow your head off. Thank you. 
Miss McCollum. Judd, please tell Daddy I'm here. <laughs> Hello, Tracy. Come on in, honey. It was about 20 yards up the slope. Then, just as I fired, the wind came up. <laughs> that old alibi. To help me. I didn't even see the one Ruby got. <laughs> Hello, Clyde. Tracy, honey. My goodness, Neil, you look like a bear. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hello, honey. Well, heavens, you don't have to stand. Sit down. Oh, Tracy. Oh, hello, Rube. Hi, Tracy. Uh, this is my daughter, Tracy, doctor. Dr. Manfred, honey. How do you do? Oh, Vorges told me all about you, doctor. Our cook. You delivered her grandson, and she says you're wonderful. Thank you, Miss McCollum. Ready, Bo? All set. Here's yours, Dad. Oh, thanks, boss. My, you smell awful woodsy, darling. <laughs> I came to fetch my men early. I knew they'd be dirty from head to foot, and I want them to look nice for my party. Hello, Jim. Hello, Tracy. The rest of you can take your time. If you're there by nine, I'll forgive you. We'll be there. Oh, Dr. Manfred. It's a little supper dance at the country club. Sort of a welcome home party for Boke. Please come. Well, I... It's not as dull as it sounds, Doctor. If Braddock's the same old town come sunup, you'll be riding home with nothing but a head. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd like to, but I have an engagement. Oh, well, another time. Well, so long. We'll Bye, see you later. Take care, yeah. Tracy. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Tracy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Come on, fellas. Goodbye. Well, nice girl, Tracy. Got brains, breeding. Yeah. Brains and breathing. Well, nothing been said yet about the getting engaged, but Cullen and I are all for it. So in the seeds of a tarnished name. Cut that. So in the seeds of eternal shame, oh, what will the harvest be? I said you cut that. I ought to kill you for that. What's stopping you? You ain't suffered enough yet. You wait till Boke Tackman marries that girl. He won't. And they'll live together fat and easy. He'll put his arms around her. She'll feel as good to him as you ever did. Better, likely, because of the fine life that goes with her. She and him will have kids. No, he's mine. It seems he don't know that. They can throw Tracy McAuliffe at him all they want. Folks, mine. Why so quiet, sugar? We going fishing? What's the use? They're not biting. Not biting? <laughs> Come on, honey. Give me a hand cleaning up this tackle box. Ruby. There ain't a fish in the world won't bite if you go at it right. Not for me, they won't. Honey, you got to figure like your old man. All these little fish that hang around near the shore, they're not for you and me. We're after the big ones. The big ones you got to go after. Out there, where the water's deep. <laughs> when we get way out yonder, you'll see old Mr. Fish. He come wiggling along, fat and sassy. He's had the pick of the lot down there, see? All of a sudden, he looks up and sees something, something different. Pretty soon, old Mr. Fish can't stand it any longer. He's got to have a sniff. And then, kaplunk! Your wheel's in your ear right fast. You got him hooked. <laughs> yes, sir. That's all there is to it, baby. The right time, give him the right bait.
hate leaving here. Every time I hate it more. Kiss me again. Oh, I left my sweater. Well, I can pick it up tomorrow or the day after if you don't need it. No, but what if your father should stop by? Not a chance. The judge is as dependable as an ocean tide. He moves out here the first Monday in June and goes back to town the morning after Labor Day. I hope you noticed you got a gal that can open a door all by herself. That's the new pump, the big one. Salt marsh for 50 years. Now there's a hundred acres planted and a hundred more almost ready to plant. You'd think nothing would ever grow. Wait and see. When I get the pump and the nitrates paid for, that land's gonna grow fleets of trucks, barges, cannon factory. Boke Tackman, empire builder. Sounds like a big heart beating. It is. It's my heart. Oh. What about me? You really think you can compete with a man's work? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's nearly morning. The stars are fading. Both driving back along the beach. Love me? Sure thing. Tell me. I love you, baby. Tell me like you mean it. Stop trying to put words in my mouth, Ruby. Let me say what I want to say when I'm ready to say it. Now relax, honey. You got your throttle wide open. But you're always holding back. You think I'll wait and wait. Well, you take your own sweet time. Don't push me, Ruby. Who's pushing? You and that one-track mind of yours. <laughs> hey, two can play at that game. Oh, all right, I got it, I got it. Shore folks be getting their backs up because of Trace and McAuliffe. The whole fishing fleet's already talking. And everybody down to the meeting house scandalizing about you and him. No, oh, those hypocrites, let them talk. I'm ashamed we got the same name. Well, I'll be changing mine pretty soon. You fool. You wanton fool. You think Boat Packman will marry you? I don't think, I know. He's ashamed of you. Sneaking out to meet you at some joint on the highway where he don't run into his fine friends. But even if he did want to marry you, Boke Tackman's tied hand and foot. Let him try to break away. They'll stop him. They got their ways. Joel, send in a couple of bourbons with water. I get far on eight holes and two birdies, and then I miss a putt that long. Cost me 40 bucks. Come on, pay up. Okay. What's the matter, George? Did our big uh, amphibious engineer take you to the cleaners? You said it. That cold dip in the ocean must have put bulk in shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did it happen? Or shall I take a guess? Well, when bulk hit that water, I bet he fairly sizzled. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next time you're out romancing, don't forget to take your water wings. Or a couple of oars. <laughs> uh, sour grapes. <laughs> OK, I admit it. Sure. The rest of us are either too old or too tired. <laughs> Say, Bo, Cullen told me about your plantation, how you want to spread out. And I've got that old cotton warehouse. You want to sell or lease? Got to think about it. You and Tracy coming to the barbecue tonight? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess so. Fine. After dinner, when our women are having themselves a hen talk, we'll get together, OK? OK, yeah. I read in the paper where you went to a party at the McCullough's. Yes. I thought about you dancing with Tracy. And honestly, Bulk, I had to pity you. She's so bony. Ruby, I want to tell you about Tracy. <laughs> That's all right, darling. I know you have to be sweet to Tracy. After all, when her father's lending you all that money. It's going to be announced Sunday. I know you'd want me to tell you first. Tracy and I are going to be married. Our families have more or less planned it since we were kids. And are you going to use your lying mouth to tell me you love that weak giddy head? Ruby, with you, it, it's been so sweet wild and crazy but when it comes to settling down for the rest of my life you see i like the little corner of the world i was born in i like everything about it including colin mccall's money the money's part of it so i can do the work i want to do you can get a job and i can work we don't need the mccall's money ruby i'm not talking about earning a living for a hundred years, the Techmans have been sliding downhill. Ever since the tide swallowed our plantation, not one of them lifted a finger to do anything about it. Setting out their lives in verandas, sopping up bourbon whiskey, like my dad. I'm not gonna end up like him. I'm gonna do things that'll shake this whole town awake, change the whole tidewater. Things I can be proud of. Like marrying somebody you don't love? Well, there's all kinds of love, Ruby. I've known Tracy so many years. It's not like you and me, no. But Tracy's gentle. She's bright as a dollar. Yeah, I know. She's got brains and breeding. Both of you. Like a pair of pedigreed hounds. Ruby, listen. It's not the end of the world. I'll still be around. I won't be tied hand and foot. We can still see each other. You'd do that. You'd come to me on the sly. You'd try to make me... Ruby, I didn't say that. Ruby! and Rock! And don't ever come sneaking back here! Stop, you! Let him go! Anybody's gonna kill him, I am. <laughs> Last Wednesday afternoon, a surprise shower was given for Miss Tracy McAuliffe, who will marry Mr. Bok Tackman, son of Judge Henshaw Tackman. The Tackman and McAuliffe. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Hello, Letty. I declare, Dr. Sewell, I'm beginning to think you have a case on me, <laughs> the way you're always popping in here. Do you mind? Mercy, no. I'm partial to doctors. One of my beaux was a doctor. Miss Drucker's making me a new dress for the wedding. Oh? She's a spinster lady, poor thing. Got no idea what catches a man's eye. 
I wouldn't worry if Ruby were here. Nasty old needle. I'm a brute. I was just talking. I don't really mind. Whatever that medicine is, it makes me feel lovely. Dr. Saul, mm -hmm. tell Jim to drive out and get Ruby. Tell him it's doctor's orders. He'll pay you some mind. All right, Letty. I'll talk to him right now. Thank you, doctor. Oh, hello, Saul. Yeah. Hey, haven't you noticed a change in Letty the last couple of weeks? In what way? Well, seems to me she's a lot livelier. More interested in what's going on. Why, she's even planning on getting up to go to Tracy and Boke's wedding. Yeah, she told me. She wants you to drive out and bring Ruby here. I know, she asked me, but it'd be torture for Ruby with all that talk about the wedding. Letitia's dying, Jim. This change, you notice, is something that often happens just before the end. Sudden resurgence of energy, like a dying tree sometimes has a final burst of bloom. Want another doctor's opinion? No. No. How soon? Two weeks, maybe less. I only hope and pray she doesn't suffer. A little help if Ruby is here. Oh, no doubt about that. It's a kind of dress that bowls men over. It makes all the women green with envy. <laughs> Letitia, I swear you got the figure of a girl. <laughs> May I have this dance, Letitia? <laughs> You're light as a feather, Letitia. This lady. This lady. Lie down. Please. Give me the button. When it got dark, I was frightened. Papa gave me a button and told me to hold on. Then nothing could happen to me. Hold on. Did you notify Mrs. Gentry's cousins up in Raleigh? Cousins, aunts, nephews, nieces. Anything else I should do? You're going to order the flowers. And then everything's taken care of. I just realized again how extraordinary you are. Thank you, Doctor. Not only because you're beautiful, you're so unpretentious and honest. <laughs> You mustn't pay any attention to these people. This is a stuffy, snobbish town. It's the only place I know. Someday somebody will take you out of it and you'll see. Ruby, I... I think you're wonderful. Thank you, Sol. Goodbye. Bye. Downtown. Oh, here. Take my car. Thanks. Has Saul left? He had to go to the hospital. You know, I think he started to propose to me. Saul? Huh? He lost his nerve. Is there anything I can bring you? No. I won't be long. Well, Jim wasn't jealous of me. I, I'm sure of that. But he must have realized then how Letty's death had set him free. And now, each faced a painful loss. Yes? And a lonely tomorrow. My Martha says you're packing. Everything's taken care of, so I, I'm going out to stay with my folks. I'll be back early Wednesday morning. Well, why not stay on here? Give them something more to talk about? 
I don't feel. Now, what's wrong with your being here? The years I've known you? Why, you... Now, Jim, don't tell me that I'm just like a daughter. You still planning to go to New York? I suppose so. Maybe you're planning to get married. <laughs> Whatever put that in your head? Well, it's been in Saul's head since the first day he laid eyes on you. Oh, it's all sweet. Martha's fixing supper early so I can eat before I go. Ruby! Heaven knows what you'll do, running off, getting yourself tangled up with somebody. No, don't worry about me, Jim. No, I don't want to lose you. You and me are the same kind of people. As far as this town is concerned, we're mongrels. Even Letty was out of my class. Well, Letty was sick for eight and a half years. For eight and a half years, I didn't have a marriage, but I stuck it out. And I was going to wait a while before I asked you. Well, I'm asking you now. This is James Gentry. That would really give them something to talk about. Oh, forget them. They'd say Bo Tackman wouldn't have me. So I hooked you to get your money. Anybody talk about my wife, I'd break them in two. They'd wonder if I was still mooning over Bo. And they'd talk about it. And after a while, maybe you'd start wondering too. Oh, I've seen you hunting fish, Ruby, and I never saw you cry about the ones that got away. Go up to New York if you want to. I've got to be there on business next month. We can be married then. <laughs> All right, Ruby? All right, Jim. Oak and Tracy were married in the traditional manner to which Braddock was accustomed. And then, without telling his secret to another soul, Jim went to New York and there made Ruby Corey his wife. Shall I carry you to the office? <laughs> Mr. Biffle are here. Oh, fine. Send them in. They got here so fast, you'd think they were working for you. Well, in a way, they are. Good to see you, Jim. Thank you. Howdy. What's your big news? I'll lay odds it's that assembly plan. It's bigger than that. Gentlemen, I want you to meet Mrs. Gentry. Ruby? Ruby and I were married last Thursday in New York. Well, congratulations, Jim. I mean it. I'm sure you do. Yeah, it's not good for man to live alone. I'll run it front page tonight, if you say so, Jim. That's why I called you over. Any uh, sort of statement you want to make? You can say we're both very happy, and we're glad to be home. And we can sure say the bride's a beauty. Let me tell you, Mrs. Gentry, you look like a million dollars. Hmm. I've seen a million dollars, and believe me, Ruby looks a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I better hop back to my office before they run off the paper. Yeah, I'll run along too. Oh, one more item. You might want to say we're going to give a party real soon. End of next week. Okay. So that all my friends can meet Mrs. Gentry. You two gentlemen are invited. And your wives. Well, that's nice of you. Right, Sean? <clears throat> very nice. Thank you very much, Mrs. Gentry. We'll sure be there. Couldn't keep us away. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable how many prominent families stayed away. Their excuses were convincing enough, but it seemed as if some secret conspiracy had been successfully executed. Well, I have an early operation in the morning. Oh, ate too much. It takes a Yankee to appreciate this Tidewater food. Mm, it takes a Yankee to show some manners. Oh, no. Frank, tell them that'll be all for tonight. And they're welcome to eat before they go. Good night, Jim. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for showing up. Good night, Ruby. Good night, Tom. Forget it, Jim. The ones who did come had a good time. 
The rest of them don't matter. Not to me. They underrated me. They'll find out they've been tempting Providence. They'll never accept me. No? Well, we'll see about that. Jim, Jim, how long is it you've been a member of this country club? Why, well, nearly ten years. Ten years? Blamed if I ever saw you before one of our Saturday night brawls. Well, the penalty and reward of having a young wife, gentlemen. Well, <laughs> oh, there's the next dance. I'd better get out there. Ted. Yes, sir. Ruby said if she was stuck with Grandpappy Stafford for more than one dance, she'd scalp whatever hair I had left. <laughs> and that I want to keep. <laughs> Thanks for the drink, Jim. Oh, hello, Doc. Neil, how are you? Good to see you. What's the matter, Jim? Somebody snatch her away? Jim? Yes, sir? Same as before. Doctor, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Well, now, this business they always hand you about not being able to mix your drinks. You know, I often wondered about that. Now, do you think that... Give me a double brandy, please. Yes, sir. Please put some ice in the towel. Here, drink this. I don't want this. Come on, honey, let's go. Not till I finish with that scum. That filthy, where did he go? Jim, don't be a fool. Take your hands off me. Jim, what's got into you? I've never seen you like this. Well, you little tramp. 
You're dressed up to look like a lady. It's a pity you can't behave like one, and none of this mess would have happened. I uh, had no business saying what I did. I'm sorry. What? Well, Jim and I... We... No, not now. Well, tomorrow's another day. shifting. Jim, when are we going to talk? About what? About last night. Isn't that what we came out here for? I wanted to be alone with you. That's all. But how can you forgive me if I don't tell you? I don't want to hear. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't even think it, do I? I don't want to hear anything. If you saw him first, or if he saw you, or if he asked you to dance. I don't know how it happened. All of a sudden, Boke was there, and we were dancing, and it, it seemed like we both forgot there was anybody else. Don't, Ruby. When I married you, I knew all about Boke. I would have been crazy to think that he still didn't mean something to you. Jim, what is love? I've been so happy with you. Don't talk. I don't mind being second best. Oh, Jim, I do love you. I do, I do. How could I help it? Are you cold? Mm, a little bit. I'll get you something to drink.
I keep seeing Jim's face just before it happened. And then afterwards, he was gone so quickly. It doesn't seem possible that he just swallowed up by the waves. How could he be gone so quickly? Maybe if I, maybe if I hadn't called out, he, he would have stayed below. Or if I called out something else besides his name. You got to stop blaming yourself. Without him, I. What's that? What are they doing? Just making a racket. Probably worked up about Jim. Worked up? I'll close the window. Hello? Murderer. Who is this? Murderer! Murderer! Somebody calling me a murderer. Murderer! Hello. Who is this? I'm gonna have you reported to... They think I killed Jim? Sheriff Anderson, after questioning Mrs. Gentry, did not dismiss the possibilities of suicide or a foul play. He said he was forced to accept Mrs. Gentry's story since there were no other witnesses to the tragedy. However, he mentioned reports of domestic difficulties in the Gentry home and said that Mr. Gentry, only the night before, engaged in a fist fight because of Mrs. Gentry's attentions to another man. Pay them no mind. Somebody's got to stop. Braddock Times? This is Mrs. James Gentry. I want to speak to Mr. Neil Forgley. Hello, Neil. Neil, you, you don't really think that... Jim killed himself. Or that I could possibly. Everything I told the sheriff was true. It was all lies, that story you wrote. And after the brazen show you made of yourself the other night, I'd say you're getting off easy. Sure. Sure, I was Jim's friend. But let me tell you something, Ruby. When you sashayed in from the swamps thinking you was good as anybody, his friends should have sent you packing before you could hook him. And if we had, he'd still be alive. Going through the driveway. That's trespassing on private property. I'll stop him. No, Judge, that'll just make things worse. She's talking no, about... No, don't you understand what's going to happen? Get out of my way, no, no, Judge, you better Oh, shit. Oh, I'm all right, Doctor. But a lot of people in this town are going to be sick. Jim had always used his money wisely. But Ruby was out for blood. The Wayne Trucking Company has missed a lot of payments, and they owe a lot of interest. How do I take over their trucks? Well, if you want the trucks, since the loan is delinquent, you can demand payment in full. I want payment in full. Now, this note on Perry Duncan, or what did you call it? A demand note. If you intend to collect on that, it's customary to give 30 days' notice. It says here, 24 hours. Well, that's the minimum notice. Give them the minimum. First thing tomorrow morning. How did this get here? Didn't Cullen McCall have loaned money for this? Oh, about Tackman's note. The Fair County Bank did make the original note, but Mr. Gentry took it over from them. Mr. Gentry thought it, uh... Very promising project. 
Do you want to demand payment on that, Mrs. Gentry? Neil Forgren. Can I take over the Braddock Times? With a writ of attachment? Well, from a business standpoint, I'd advise against it. Can I take over the Braddock Times? Naturally, you can, Mrs. Gentry. You can also take a million dollars and make a bonfire out of it. Have that note or, or writ or whatever you call it served on Mr. Fogwin first thing tomorrow morning. It's tied up the docks because of you. Packing plants close. All those folks out of work. And they're hating me because I'm your brother. They're hating me for your sins. And I told Paul you had to come and fetch you home to make you stop what you're doing. But he wouldn't listen. Pop's got more sense. Sister, you've got to pray. Pray for forgiveness. You going crazy, Jewel? No. Kneel with me. Tell her you sinned. So as I can go to the meeting with a joyful heart and say yes. Yes, she sinned, but on her knees she said she was sorry. Sorry? For getting back at people who gave me a rough time all my life? You're plowing iniquity and you're sowing wickedness. Go home. Get out. There'll be a reckoning. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap. Well, so far I reap nothing but pleasure. Go to your meeting and tell them that. Evil. Evil spawned of the devil. And tell him this is just the beginning. You've sown the wind, and you'll reap the whirlwind. Well, Bo, I expected you a couple of days ago. Well, I've been staying out at the project. I didn't get your letter till this morning. I got here as quick as I could. Didn't even stop to dress for the occasion. Oh? What occasion? Well, calling on a beautiful woman. <laughs> Would you like a drink? Sure. I was hoping you'd come to see me without being asked. Well, I thought of it. Well? I was afraid you might have blood dripping off your claws. I haven't hurt you. I know. And I could. Do you know why I asked you to come here? Probably it's my turn, and you want to see if I'll crawl. For old time's sake. How much? What's the price? It's all yours. I'm giving it back to you. You don't owe me a cent. Tell me, why do I rate this? You're trying to buy off your conscience? You think I'm sorry for what I've done to them? Those foul-mouthed, whiskey-soaked Carolina gentlemen? I've got them on their knees begging for mercy, and I'm glad. Will be. Nobody's ever harmed you enough to... Not enough! The way they tramp back and forth over my life, treating me like I was trash. They never let up. When I married Jim, when he died, and, Boak, you know if it wasn't for them that you and I would... Boak, now I've got money. I can give you anything. Everything. Forget your pride. I don't care now if you were wrong or right when you married Tracy. I'll never talk about it. You're worried about what people will say. 
We can leave. We can go anywhere in the world. Oh, both. And they lived happily ever after. Kiss me, both. Still feel the same. That's right. Exactly the same. There are things you can change with money, Ruby. The way you fix your hair, the way you dress. You can buy houses, dogs, guns, cars. You can even buy some people. You can buy a lot of things with Jim's money, Mrs. Gentry. But you can't buy your way out of the swamp. And you can't buy me. Mom! had told her himself how the land had been salt marsh for 50 years. And now, as hundreds of acres were drained and plowed and planted, all his hopes and ambitions were growing there. your own sign, Miss Gentry? No. Now, that stretch yonder where nothing's planted still has a lot of salt water in it. We're clearing it up as fast as we can. Turn off the pumps. But high tide will flood it again, and you'll be right back where you started. I said turn off the pumps. I can't do it, Mrs. Gentry, unless I know for sure that... Walt, he doesn't seem to think I own this property. She owns it all right. Well, if I turn off those pumps, the part that's planted will get flooded too. Why, in a couple of weeks, all of the... Turn off the pumps and have your men dig through that dike. Dig through? A good wide ditch. I don't want to wait a couple of weeks. It was almost as though Ruby were jealous of the land, as though she finally realized that her only real rival for Boke's love was his ambition, his determination to be more than just a tackman. And so, almost as if it were another woman who stood between her and the man she loved, Ruby attacked the land and destroyed it, and watching, felt a bitter satisfaction. But Ruby had never understood was that a man and his dreams, a man and his work, are one and the same. Boke had tramped those fields, had dug in the muck with his own hands, and put all his strength and mind and will into making those frail plants grow. Cigarette? Match? Let's get out of here.
Ruby, baby. Sure glad to see you. Couldn't start duck season without my sugar. Hi, Pop. Come on, honey. You got some gun you can loan me, Judd? Sure, I got that 16 gauge with a full choke. Fine. Only thing is the muzzle blast. But I got this compensator. Let me see that gun, Cullen. I've always wanted it. Ruby. This is Gentry. Judd didn't say he was expecting you. Well, he heard a car drive up, but You I... didn't say you were planning on hunting with us today, Bob. I didn't know I was going to till just a little while ago. Sit down, gentlemen. New gun? Yes, it is. English. Yeah, I ordered it through Ginter. I read an ad for this gun. Yeah, in the Gun and Rod Journal. It's listed at nearly $2,000. You must be feeling prosperous. <laughs> I ordered it last summer. That was back in the palmy days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I made up my mind I was going to hunt with it once before I put it up for sale. Yes, these are mighty lean times. I was just thinking it's a lucky thing for us that there's a limit on ducks, Mrs. Gentry. <laughs> You're limiting me to the limit? Well, no. We're just hoping you'll be generous and leave us a few. To better times, gentlemen. It's bound to come. We've weathered worse than this. Droughts and floods and Yankee invasion. You didn't drink. To better times. When the swamp trotters take over and turn the whole world into a stinking swamp. Let's go back. What's the matter? Don't you like it here? Maybe you're afraid. Of what? Me. Of the kind of man I am now? I think you hurt me. You finally got me, Ruby. You got me where you want me. But you don't like it, do you? I don't mind you taking the land, but why did you have to scuttle it? Why do you have to ruin everything you touch? Oh, Bog, I loved you so much. Ruby, it's good to see you afraid. Oh. Go on. Kill me. I was wrong. I didn't know. I Oh, God, I didn't want this. Oh, Ruby. When I think what it could have been. Hey, 
shall be bound together and thrown into a fiery pit. It's Jewel. Woe unto her and her iniquity. Get over there behind me. Incense she burned, and she decked herself with pearls. I can't tell where he is. Come on, through here. Over there, keep low. the very root of wickedness in her beauty a snare the lord strengthens the hand of the righteous to strike down the sinner Joe, you going crazy Say you love me. Folks say you love me. What have I done? What have I done? Yes, Ruby Gentry was born on the wrong side of the tracks and the people of Braddock never let her forget it. <laughs> 